This is a story that I'm not proud of, where I lose my temper and utterly wreck the game, but I think it's a sure-worthy story nonetheless. First time with this specific Pathfinder group, I found an ad for them somewhere which I won't reveal for the sake of their privacy. I went there because I figured it would be a fun experience since almost all the games I played for like 5 years had been online in some way rather than in person. I brought a couple of boxes of cheap pizza with me as my contribution to the snack table and we get down to business. The GM, a big grizzly bear of a man, I'm a pretty tall guy and he made me feel short. He was nice enough and fairly good humoured, but he was a tad gruff and ham-fisted in some of his tactics for coaxing players through things. I'm probably being critical though, all things considered. His game was basically Pathfinder with 3.5 epic level progression rules and a lot of 3.5 fluff. He also had a neat house rule about permanency applying to any spell or psionic effect for standardised amount of gold for the spell's level although they could be dispelled or disrupted as usual. I cringed when I heard that the story proper was going to be riddled with psionics, which I am far from a fan of, but I thought I'd grip my teeth and bear with it despite my prejudices against them. The plot was basically that magic was slowly falling out of use as more and more people spontaneously develop psionic powers and the rest of the plot of the X-Men movies. I think that the GM didn't want us to allow players to use psionics, but to be honest, I couldn't really tell because that went out the window way before the session even began. We were level 20, supposedly the best of the best, and we're supposedly going to be facing epic level challenges. Nancy no chin. <laughs> A scrawny little guy with what appeared to be a missing chin. He was quiet and out of the way, and he never really did much out of character, so I can't comment too much on his real character. He played a monk, psionic fist, soul fist variant. He was basically the stereotypical zen, master of self, I only want peace but will kill you guy of the party. The character was so bland I don't even remember anything else about him. Fish face. She wasn't ugly, but she was bug-eyed and looked like she had silicone injections in her face. Okay, she was pretty ugly, but she had the typical skinny bitch attitude like she was hot stuff. So I couldn't help but superimpose a big carp over her every time I looked at her. It's probably for the best, because I was too distracted by this mental image to really pay attention to a lot of the stupid shit she said. She was at most times trying to drag politics or religion into debate where it was non sequitur or a red herring altogether. Her character was an annoying as shit Wilder, who was a typical fiery tempered Mary Sue. She geared up to be the nuke of the party. Also, it was a fucking dry with a trite. Wasp ethics, yeah. The only decent player, not me. A really big guy and not at all fun to look at, but he was mostly pleasant and seemed to know his stuff. He wanted to play Bard, but the GM convinced him to play something else through the game means he convinced me not to be a UMD focused rogue, Minimax or get the fuck out, and he ended up going for a Magus. It was kind of interesting because he played him like a tribal warrior shaman whose tribe was deep in shit because of the developments in the more developed parts of the world and was attempting to save his people from being disturbed by the recent events. He was also really creative in combat. All in all, I think he was the only one who put real effort into the game. That faggot. This guy gives bad names to faggots everywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He had no concept of personal space and no concept of, I'm not gay. What? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, he did have a concept of, if you touch me there again, I'm going to pummel you and file a sexual misconduct shit. I suppose I'd be flattered if it was a woman, but god damn, this guy was a fucking creeper. It didn't help that his character was what I called out of character, the date rape scion. <laughs> Seriously, that faggot would probably turn people homophobic if they never met a normal gay guy before. Me, I was making a high charisma, trap making disabling and UMD focused rogue, but I was flat out told in so many words that I needed to make a minimax power gamey character or I wasn't going to get to play. I took offence, so I made a wizard, stereotypical in dress from the chronicle hat to the robes and tiny glasses. I wanted to give him a beard, but apparently in his setting, elves can't have facial hair, so I said his eyebrows grew down his belt. <laughs> it was an old fossil of an elf, back from when magic was the milk and honey of the world, and was going to recruit anyone he saw with even a modicum of magical talent in an ill-advised attempt to save the practice of magic in a world of pervasive psionics by showing up on random people's doorsteps, telling their children that there were wizards, and spiriting them away to a permanent greater demi-plane with a castle where his cohort would teach them magic. 
If you get the joke, you're smarter than most of this group. Most of my feats were item creation ones, so that I could have the wands and staves that I love to have in my arsenal. Party strife just a few minutes in. It wasn't a good start. I was already being an asshat because I got sand on my cunt over being told to minimax or get the fuck out, and fish face and that faggot were annoying as fuck too, which was adding to my ire. We finally start the session. We congeal off the walls of a high-end tavern in some urban area, some plot, and then we go wandering about. I spellcraft and detect magic every apprentice age kid I see and try to discreetly determine if they have any talent. The GM blocks this at every turn for understandable reasons. I mean, it would derail things. Yet, at the same time, the date rape scion was dragging NPCs off all the time and attempting to describe all the terrible things he was doing to them. I told him to knock it off more than the GM did, and the GM sent me a few warning glances about it, but seriously, I don't need to hear about the date rape scion unleashing all his fetishes on the villagers. Sounds like someone I know. Yeah, <laughs> The date rape scion also harassed my character in character, but I slapped the protection from evil on myself and he couldn't physically touch me for a while. I ended up making a permanent later because I knew the little fucker was counting down for the spell to expire so he could get on with touching my wizard inappropriately. <laughs> Thankfully I packed a lot of diamond dust with me for some of my more powerful magic and so I could see what I could do with the GM's very generous permanency house rules. The fiery tempered Wilder Sue gave my character flack, calling him a pedophile in character with great vindiction as if it was the scummiest act imaginable, which was funny coming from a dry. Granted, I suppose some of his stuff with scouting students could appear a bit like that, but dear sweet Jesus, why target me and not the scion who was sneaking off the rip NPCs whenever we were pushing to investigate something? The wilder continued to lambast me for reasons I didn't really understand, with which I retaliated with a long-winded pontificating ramble about how magic was dying and why it needed to be passed on. This had a lot of old man rambling stereotypes about the good old days with lots of partridge farm references and I ate up a lot of time with that. Although, I did stop to occasionally note that my character was indeed going about his business and proceeding towards the obvious goal of the current plot point. It was about a minute into my good old day spiel before she started to talk over me with this weird line of dialogue. It was like she was projecting her hate for an ex onto my wizard and darvoing the fuck out of him, which got confusing fast. So I used message cantrip to talk in her ear about the good old days and leave the general area so my wizard would be out of earshot. Yeah, I know, message establishments are a two-way conversation, but I argued that because magic was so obscure now, like someone being fluent in Esperanto in Asia, that she wouldn't know how without a spellcraft or knowledge arcana of some kind. Fortunately, she wasn't even trained and got to be petty and talk about the good old days without having to listen to her in character or thanks to the GM. Out of character either. I only kept it up for a couple of minutes and went back to the plot right afterwards. The first PK attempt. The wilder tried to PK me about 10 minutes later when I rejoined the group after a brief detour. Apparently she was incensed at the fact that I found a cheap way to make it so that I didn't have to listen to her but could prattle on like the old man my character was. Luckily I hadn't been flat footed, having good sight of her and won the initiative so I beat her stupidly high spell resistance and turned her into her newt because my wizard was all about the classics. One mage hand later and I held her nudified character in my hand and decided that I'd talk about why the newt baleful polymorph <laughs> No, I'm saying that slow. The newt baleful polymorph was such a classic. Look, just put that in. The date rape scion and the monk scion both decided to defend her character and demanded that I release her at once. Not wanting everything to devolve into fighting, I played it off as if my wizard thought that they wanted her released into their custody and told them that they looked like they could handle any of the kid's hissy fits. He handed her over and began to walk off, forgetting to undo the effect. They cleared their throats and got his attention about it and I told them that they could hire a court mage and dispel it and they reminded me that mages were almost extinct. Oh, and then I dispelled the baleful polymorph and went silly me and moved on. I think they were pretty upset to save the mages who was being all sage and witch doctor like in the background of all of this and trying to keep the peace like a good guy. The second PK attempt. Fish face, no chin and that faggot were clearly plotting since they take breaks to go off and huddle and were passing notes during the session in what they probably thought was a discreet manner. 
Maybe it's my trained eye for catching students texting, but they were really obvious about it. I figured they were going to gang up on me at some point, so I just kept the scrolling of plane shift in one hand, just in case I had to escape, figuring being a wizard would let me excuse just happening to have a scroll ready. Fortunately, whatever was going to happen was put off when what was apparently the big bad evil guy showed up to cause havoc and monologue at us. We were told that his awe-inspiring feats of psionic power were terrifying even to the likes of us blah blah blah. We're obviously not supposed to fight him because he's too powerful. I would find out later that he was some level 40 scion, some psionic prestige class. Apparently he was trying to turn scions against non-scions blah blah blah. <laughs> Sounds like Magneto. <laughs> okay, he's a scion supremacist. It's not Magneto. <laughs> that just says Magneto. Fish face tries to get my wizard killed by the big bad evil guy by attacking him and rolling bluff to make it look like it was me before cheesing it. No chin and that faggot soon followed. The good guy Landwheel stays for like a round before he gets out of there too after my wizard assuring him that he'd be fine to go. I was only really worried about losing my gear, since I had a cloning lab set up in my demi plane and would just appear there with a couple of negative levels and no items, not that the others knew that. Those dicks just wanted my character to die. The big bad evil guy looks at me and asks who dare attack him. I played the part of a senile old man picking up his scrolls and looking through them while failing to make a coherent statement. While doing this, I asked the GM for a planes check so that what I'm about to do isn't metagaming. My obscenely high planes role let me know, in the GM's words, everything about plane of force, which was the specific plane that I wanted to know about. I managed to get out and read magic in the meantime, which the GM is nice enough not to make me roll intelligence for, and I activated a scroll of time stop that I had retrieved in the confused old man act. I get lucky on the roll, and I've got five rounds to do whatever in, so what do I do? I cast planar adaption on myself, pull out a scroll of gate, and slide on over to a specific point in the plane of force. The force that the biggest psionic connection is. Well no more scions means no more big bad evil guy. Because of the various books that the GM had informed me that he had been using, I knew on a meta level that scions were all connected to the plane of force. If you do it right, you can go on an easter scavenger hunt and server a scion's ties to the plane which is a lot like forcefully making a cleric or paladin lose the favour of their god. All of those abilities go bye bye. Since the GM was so kind as to tell me that, I knew everything about the plane of force. I thought I'd go and ruin the big bad evil guy's day. Now, I only had three rounds left in my time stop, and I didn't really want to risk the big bad evil guy finding out what had happened and being trapped with a level 40 scion on the plane of force. Wizard or not, so I got busy and cast gate. I get to the point where the place between the negative energy plane and the quasi-mental plane of void. I then take advantage of the GM's oh so generous permanency house rolls and dump 25k worth of diamond dust out of about 100,000 that I had on my person on making that gate permanent. Not wanting to be there when the chaos from that start up, I renewed my time stop and the plane shifted to the material world and watched the unfolding chaos. Thanks to my second casting of Time Stop, I had another two rounds to do as I will. So I cast an extended black tentacles and a greater invisibility on myself. After that, I just bammed Maximize and Power Innervates from a staff until the fucker died. With psionics fizzling out of existence, he was a level 40 commoner. Thankfully, there was no saving throws versus innervation, so he died quickly and the GM had no plot because psionics didn't exist anymore. The plane of force was gone, the big bad evil guy was dead, and there was no more scions anywhere. I then told the GM that my next step was to expand my attempts to teach magic, so as to fill the void created by missing scions. The first scratch. What? No, that can't be! The party can't win a few hours into the first session and take away all the plot. Retcon time. The GM changes it back before I started casting Innervates, and then he got dramatic about the earth shaking and the wild things being thrown out willy-nilly by every scion in the material plane. And I managed to cast Psionic Resistance on myself, a spell that the GM had made available as an analogue spell to resistance since scions were everywhere. 
and that helped me to avoid some nasty stuff that was being tossed in my direction. Every scion was apparently discharging every power point that they had at random. Because I used a plane to shift to get back to the material realm, the big bad evil guy apparently still had his psionics under full control, and so I was confronted with the monologue of doom. With the psionic chaos being thrown around in the midst of all the drama, I pull out another scroll of time stop because I had an ass ton of these things, because why not? And then I cast planar adaption on myself and immediately left for one of many private demi planes I had without waiting for him to finish. The big bad evil guy followed me through what I assumed was GM fate. So I cop out and get a scroll of greater demi plane out of my handy haversack. A scroll because I don't have 6 hours to actually cast the spell, so I can add new property to the demi plane where we were standing in. I chose non psionic. The second scratch. The GM stared at me blankly. I said that one of the many things you can do to a demi plane is make it so that there's no magic in it, since he proves so many magical things that could affect psionics like psionic resistance detect psionics and other things for the sake of the setting and left it open for other things. I said that it was only logical that I could do it with a demi plane. He changed the rules again, says that the scion's connection to the plane of forces is inherently different from the magic and makes it so that a demi plane couldn't block it out even though there's such a thing as anti-psionic field, but whatever. I personally think it was the GM not wanting his terrible big bad evil guy to turn into a level 40 commoner again, but that's just my opinion. Since the GM vetoed letting me negate psionics, in this plane I had a bunch of constructs of minecrafting shit because you can totally do that if you give them a brain. Expensive but awesome. This demi plane had the first fire dominant element trait so that my constructs that healed with fire damage healed obscene amounts of HP per round and already had a buttload of temporary hit points on top of their normal max because this is where they lived. So I cast Dimensional Anchor on the big bad evil guy and used my control over the constructs to just have them drop whatever they were doing and mob him. After that it was just a casting of greater invisibility, an anti-deception spell and spamming maximized empowered innervations until the big bad evil guy was dead again. The third scratch. At this point I was just told you're right and got thrown out of the host's house. The DM didn't even bother to rock fall me. He just told me I was out. No matter how many retcons the GM used he couldn't think of a way to salvage his plot without writing me out of the game and that is how I got kicked out of a Pathfinder grip first session. Well I have to say this is one of my favorites I think I've done in a while. Thinking about it I can't remember the last time a player character has defeated the big bad evil guy twice in the first session from any video or any story that I've ever done. So uh, it's a new one for me. You could argue, you could argue maybe, you know, the guy was kind of derail the game and all that. But like, you know, like, it's a, the whole point of tabletop games, I think, is to have fun. And, you know, for me, when it comes to like, you know, IDM mostly... And I find that, like, you know, I don't like telling people, no, you're doing it wrong, you need to do it this way. You kind of have to just, like, let go and let the players just enjoy themselves. I think that's the best way, and that's how you get the best results. For me, personally, I buy into that sort of But, look, as always, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely remember to subscribe. Check out Thread Thrasher for other videos. And, look, um, I'll see you in the near future. All right?